So soybeans stimulate the bones with the E2, E1 receptors, and they give you protein to, to maintain muscle mass and bone mass at the same time. An excellent food for people, especially as they get older. And this nonsense on the internet that's false about making people afraid to eat soybeans, and there's no, um, obviously we're talking about eating organic soybeans anyway, so they're not GMO and they're not full of glyphosate and things like that. We make this delicious um, homemade milk, but the difference is when you're making your homemade milk yourself, it's not pasteurized. When you buy the homemade almond milk in the supermarket, it's obviously the, the nut milk or the soy milk. It's pasteurized, so it has a longer shelf life, and it can sit in your refrigerator for a whole month. But when you make it yourself, the disadvantage is it can't, you have to use it within the next one or two days, usually the third day. So you can, the day you make it, you can use it, and the next day and the day after that, you can use it. But after that's one day, two days, three days, and after that, don't use it anymore. Throw it out or make a fresh batch. You can keep it. If, it, if you're buying a commercial one, you can leave it. It's not going to go bad. Salad dressings generally and, and sauces and dishes stay fresh in the refrigerator for more than a week if you're using tomato sauce, lemon, or vinegar in the recipe because then that keeps it the acidity down low enough so it keeps longer in the re within the refrigerator and stays fresh longer. That's why a lot, of, and a lot of our dressings. That's why when you buy my dressings on the website, if you're buying like the orange cashew dressing or our Tuscan herb or our, one of the dressings from the website, they're going to taste a little more vinegary because you have to buy, to keep it so it has shelf life at room temperature, you have to have the acid count be high enough. You follow me? So if you want, sometimes I like to make it myself and not use my bottled dressings because I don't want it to taste so vinegar. I want to put more fruity and more, make it more creamy. So when you make it yourself, the flavor might be a little different, but you can use less vinegar because you don't have to worry about maintaining so it's going to sit on a shelf for a month and not go bad at room temperature. You follow me? But the ones we have are still okay, but it's still important how to know how to make your own salad dressings at home. So raw nuts and seeds, you have half an ounce of each meal. You have your breakfast, is usually a small amount of grain with the nuts and seeds, with the, the fruit. And then some, some br times breakfast, we have a glass of fresh squeezed vegetable juice with that. And just to review, that salt is salt. In other words, it doesn't matter if it's any, you know, Celtic salt or Himalayan salt or any kind of special salt. Almost 600 milligrams of sodium per one quarter teaspoon, per even a quarter teaspoon, even a pinch of salt has too much salt in it. Your diet generally gives you about, just the food, natural foods give you about 500 to 700 milligrams of salt a day. That gives you a leeway of maybe 200 to 300 a day to not go over the 1,000 limit, which means that if you had a little, you know, a Ezekiel bagel or some tomato sauce that had 200 milligrams of salt per serving, and there are tomato sauces that are, have like 160 or 170 milligrams of salt per quarter cup serving, You're using a quarter cup of tomato sauce, so on, you're still okay. So you don't, you don't have to be 100% have zero sodium, except as long as you only have a maximum of 200. And I don't really use Bragg, Bragg's amino acids anymore because it's 900 milligrams of sodium per tablespoon which is 300 per teaspoon, which is still a pretty lot. And it makes me feel, you know, I, if I'm using a, some kind of added salt to flavor a dish, I'm more likely to use the coconut aminos, not the Bragg's aminos, not the soy aminos, but the coconut aminos, because the coconut aminos are 300 milligrams of sodium per tablespoon versus 900 milligrams of sodium per tablespoon on the soy aminos. So if you want to add a little extra sodium, you're just adding the teeniest bit from the coconut aminos, which are only adding maybe 100 uh, milligrams extra to the meal not 300 milligrams of extra to the meal. I find a big difference. If I have something with like 200 to 300 milligrams of extra sodium per the meal, I'm still under my 1,000 for the day, but I don't feel well. Just be, I, I have, I'm drinking extra water at night. I'm feeling like I got poisoned with salt just from having 200 in the meal. So it's too much for me because I'm so used to hardly ever having any sodium in my diet, and I feel better that way. And, um, and I'm saying to you guys that when you're going from a high sodium diet to a no added sodium diet, your kidney is used to putting out a lot of sodium all the time. So in the short term, your kidney may still be sucking out too much sodium, so your body sodium and your blood sodium may drop down a little too low, and you might feel a little fatigued. 
that when you're cutting back from high sodium to low sodium, but after a few weeks, your kidney understands that you're not taking in much sodium and develops the ability to hold on to sodium, and you're not sweating out your sodium either when you sweat. So your body then is, gets, gets accustomed to the lower sodium diet, so the blood level of sodium still stays almost the same. So the blood level of sodium doesn't raise when you have more sodium or lower when you have less sodium in the long run, but in the short run it may modify itself just before you, until your kidney adapts to it. The adaptations your body makes to a high sodium diet um, age you more rapidly, and the adaptations your body makes to a low sodium diet slow the aging process because you're holding on to nutrients and minerals and not releasing it that much. And that's why people who, who are on a high sodium diet have to over drink water and they're flushing minerals out of their body all the time, losing too much nutrients in their urine because they're drinking so much. Whereas on a low sodium diet, we're holding on to the nutrients in our body. We're not just wasting them, and we don't have to drink as much. And when we do drink, our urine is not going to have much sodium in it. And when we do sweat, our sweat's not going to have much minerals in it. So we're not going to be losing the valuable minerals. You only lose the excess you don't need. Keep in mind, if you overdrink water on a low-sodium diet, you, then your sodium could become too low, and you could feel weak and fatigued. Some people eating a healthy diet could feel fatigue from because they're drinking too much water and keeping their electrolytes too low from over-drinking water. So nuts and seeds, the high omega-3 nuts again are hemp, flax, chia, and walnuts. And the highest protein nuts are hemp seeds, sunflower seeds, Mediterranean pine nuts. Almonds and, and pumpkin seeds are pretty high also, but not as high as hemp, sunflower, Mediterranean pine nuts. Mediterranean pine nuts are different than the Chinese pine nuts. Just to make it clear, the shape of a Chinese pine nut is wider at one end and narrower at the other end and typically has a little nib at the end like that. Whereas a Mediterranean pine nut, this is only 12% protein, whereas a Mediterranean pine nut could be 40% protein. And that's, so these are, there are th probably a thousands of different varieties of pine nuts. They're a huge food for the history of human, the human race. Humans, Homo sapiens, Neanderthal man, all types of precursors to the humans always ate a lot of, got a lot of their food from pine cones and pine nuts, and there are thousands of different varieties. And now in the modern world, we're just having like two varieties of pine nuts. It's the craziest things because that's what are commercially available. So after this lecture, we all could go together out to the woods and shake down some pine trees for lunch. But the point is, is that What's the problem is it's hard to just plant them in your backyard because the, tr the tree takes like 20 or 30 years to get big enough to produce, to produce the pine nuts. So you, you have to, that's why they're so expensive because they, they have to be older trees. You can't just put in a pine nut farm. You know what I mean? The trees take so long to produce food. But the Mediterranean pine nuts are, are very high protein foods. So we make them available and give them to people, especially for professional athletes and people who are into, you know, who need extra protein. To get the, to get these those Mediterranean pines are so high in protein. They taste really good too. Getting into some recipes now, just to review these weight loss secrets and these longevity secrets. You're eating two or three meals a day. Some people do better on two meals a day. Some women, especially women with slower metabolic rates, three meals a day is too much food. They have to split their meals basically to a later breakfast, eating breakfast nine or ten o'clock instead of eight or seven or eight o'clock. And then they make dinner earlier, and they eat dinner at like 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock, and that's their day. Some days I eat two meals a day. Like, for example, I wake up in the morning and, you know, have a glass of juice or some water or something, or maybe just an orange or a piece of wet melon. And then I'm off to, like, I have an appointment to play tennis or to go to the gym or something. So I really hardly eat any breakfast. I came back from the gym or from playing sports about 10, 10, 10 30 in the morning or something, and then I ha want to have a big meal. So I'm eating a big meal at like 10.30. And then the time I'm eating a big meal at 10 or 10.30 and 11 o'clock, I'm not going to eat lunch. That's like my, so I'm not going to feel like eating dinner till like 4 o'clock. So then I ate dinner at 4 or 5 o'clock, that's my two meals of the day. But the next day I woke up because of all the exercise I did the day before and working out so heavy in the gym. The next day at 7 o'clock in the morning, I'm hungry, so I have three meals that day. And it's the day after I exercised heavily. So usually, so some days I may do two meals and some days I may do three meals. But what I'm saying is three feedings a day max. Don't snack, only eat three feedings a day. Don't eat anything between 
after meals and don't eat anything after six o'clock at night. And if you're looking to lose weight, then you want to have lots of raw vegetables and lots of cooked green vegetables because they're low solo in calories and they're high in protein. Cooked green vegetables are really protein rich. Broccoli, like frozen broccoli is like 40% protein too. It's more than steak, more than shop meat. And then the non-starchy vegetables like tomatoes and stewed tomatoes and eggplant, stewed eggplant, baked eggplant, roasted eggplant, peppers, onions, mushrooms are very low calories and you have a lot of that in your food and your cooked vegetables, including snow pea pods that you cook in the wok with the onions and mushrooms. Possibly you opened the can of water chestnuts or bamboo shoots to fill up a little filling in there, which is really good. Your legumes become your primary carbohydrate source more than grains. So legumes are first. Beans are... I, can, I use the word beans and legumes interchangeably. So it's red kidney beans, black beans, soybeans. Soybeans are the lowest calories and highest in protein. And believe it or not, soybeans are probably the most powerful anti-cancer bean because their anti-estrogenic effects are so powerful because the genistine and the estrogen-like compounds in soy bind to the estrogen receptors in the breast and block them from being stimulated by estrogen. So they have anti-estrogenic effects on the breast tissue and prostate tissue, lowering your risk of breast and prostate cancer, very powerfully so. And they're also relatively low in calorie and super high in protein. We're talking here about utilizing soybean in your diet, not the same thing as tofu or soy milk, because tofu was made from soy milk. Tofu and soy milk are the same thing. Soybeans and tempeh, tempeh is made from the whole soybean, not from the soy milk. So there's different types of ways to use the soybean. One is by using a, the edamame, which is a, like a frozen edamame, or it's boiled, fresh boiled soybeans that you would either buy out of the pot or open the pot and eat them. And then you have the dried soybeans, which are more like the brown manila colored bean that are dried and you soak them overnight to soften them and cook them in a soup or a stew or a chili. And I'm encouraging you to use both those types for sure. And then you buy those tempeh cakes, which are cakes of fermented so whole soybeans. And I'm saying that utilizing that whole bean has very powerful longevity promoting and anti-cancer effects. And they are longevity promoting for many reasons, as well as because it's, it's rich in plant protein, but it also has powerful effects on the anti-estrogen effects, the beneficial hormonal effects. And lastly, the estrogen blocking compounds in soy, the genistein, the other estrogen-like compounds that block the E1 receptors on your breast and prostate tissue stimulate the E2 receptors on your bones. So they have a bone-building effect like estrogen does. They say after menopause, women get osteoporosis more readily, lose more bone mass, and part of that's due to the drop in estrogen. But the soybeans prevent that drop in estrogen from negatively affecting the bones because they protect their bones against, because they stimulate bones. It's kind of interesting that they can actually, when they're supposed to do something, when estrogen is supposed to do something positive, soybeans do it. But when estrogen is supposed to do something negative, soybeans block it. Did you follow that? And then because protein bioavailability goes down with aging and osteoporosis is caused by a combination of factors including lower protein bioavailability and, and weakening of the muscles with aging. So soybeans prevent that because we're talking about the need for pro plant proteins as you age to maintain muscle mass and muscle growth. So soybeans stimulate the bones with the E2, E1 receptors, and they give you protein to, to maintain muscle mass and bone mass at the same time. An excellent food for people, especially as they get older. And this nonsense on the internet that's false about making people afraid to eat soybeans. And there's no, um, obviously we're talking about eating organic soybeans anyway. So they're not GMO and they're not full of glyphosate and things like that. So we're eating legumes as a, and then after the soybean, we're eating other beans. In other words, we're utilizing soybeans as part of all the beans we use. And like I said, you're eating a few different mushrooms a day types of mushrooms a day, I want you to eat a few different types of beans a day. Usually eating some soybeans and some other type of bean with that each day. You're eating multiple types of beans. You're not having a soybean-based diet or a soy-based diet because you're eating a lot of different variety of beans and I want you to include azuki beans and red kidney beans and white beans and black beans and lentils and to so use a lot of different types of beans in your diet and include a small amount of beans in different dishes 
So you're even putting a little beans in your salad or a little beans in your stew or a little beans in your soup or a little beans in this. And so beans become your primary carbohydrate source. Your secondary carbohydrate source after beans would be things like peas and carrots and turnips and parsnips. Your secondary carbohydrate source might be these intact whole grains like quinoa and kamut and other, you know, o over over flake grains, over like flaked oatmeal, I'd be, or and certainly over anything made into a flour, and certainly over white potato. Sweet potato is better than white potato, but sweet potato is not as good as an intact grain or a root vegetable, but best, the best of all are the bean. So when we have people that are losing weight, they're having more beans as their carbohydrate source with a little bit of quinoa with their dinner or a little bit of sweet potato or cut or cooked carrots or beets or something. You know, so they're having some other carbohydrates that are vegetable-based, but they're not eating much flour or bread. Maybe once a week they may have avocado toast on, on Ezekiel bread. The type of bread I like to use once in a while are the Food for Life Ezekiel bread because they're made from sprouted and intact grains, not from grains that have been ground into a flour already. So even though it's whole grain, it still could be made of whole grain pastry flour and still be glycemically unfavorable. So we use the grains that are more coarsely ground out of sprouted grains that are, um, and, no, and we use those types of those brands that don't put a lot of salt or sweeteners or other things in the bread. And I find that the Ezekiel brand is pretty good, the Food for Life Ezekiel brand. And we don't use a lot of bread. Maybe just a couple times a week on some dishes. Maybe I'm making a, bur a bean burger where we'll have a, a piece of bread on the bottom and the top will be a piece of collard greens or lettuce holding the tomato and the red onion and the, and the healthy ketchup on top of it or something. Or if I buy one of those Ezekiel um, burger buns, I can take the top half of the burger bun and cut it in half, and I can take the bottom half of the burger bun and cut that in half, so I can take the one burger bun and make it for four different people to be the bottom piece for four different burgers. Did you follow that? Just like a little slice of bread, because you don't need the bread on the top of it, you just need the bread on the bottom, usually to hold the ketchup or the mustard or something, and then you put the... the um, the bean burger on top, the onions and maybe a little avocado or a little bit of um, red onion or tomato and lettuce on top of that, and you hold the top down with the lettuce or the collards. So we're being aware of not to overdo the carbohydrates that are non-bean carbohydrate when you're overweight looking to lose weight.